All right. Uh, in the last lecture, we were looking at uh, a common drain amplifier here. And uh, this common drain amplifier is biased by a current source. We saw that current source biasing allows us to use uh, a lesser amount of bias current in order to achieve a, a, a particular swing. And when we were looking at this common uh, drain amplifier, uh, uh, what we said was that if you examine the uh, swing, then uh, in this case, the swing at this particular point, so we have a diagram here which describes the swing part here. And this, of course, tells us we can easily compute uh, how high uh, this voltage can go, determined by the fact that M1 has to stay in saturation region. Similarly, how low can this part go, keeping in mind uh, that M2 has to be in saturation region here. So we can easily determine uh, these limits here. And as I said, harmonic distortion is not such a problem here because this is a fairly linear amplifier. Uh, uh, the reason being is, V0 is almost equal to V in here. So uh, if V in a sinusoid, then V0 also happens to be a, a good sinusoid here. And the trouble with this particular amplifier, as I was emphasizing, is that often the signal that you see here has to come from a previous stage. And this is a diagram which illustrates that. So the input to this particular stage comes from a previous stage here. And a previous stage, uh, could be uh, various kinds of amplifiers, but the typical one may be a common source with uh, a active, uh, active uh, load here. And if you look at this particular stage, what we see here is that the maximum value here, V0, remember the V0 of this one is nothing but V in of, v in of this particular stage here. So the maximum value of V0 that you can get is at the most 3.3 minus the saturation voltage. Of, of this particular transistor here, right? Even in the extreme case that V0 can go as high as 3.3, which means that V in can go as high as 3.3. Now, between V in and V0, note that there is a gate to source voltage drop. And if our threshold voltage is one volt, and in addition to that, you have some extra voltage also, which means that at the most, this can go to 3.3, which means that at the most, this voltage can go to 3.3 minus a value which is larger than one. So you're going to get a swing which is actually less than two. So here is 3.3 supply voltage and you'll get a swing which is less than two volt. So this is a problem with this particular stage here. The problem with this particular stage is that there is a gate to source voltage drop between the input and the output. And if the input can only go as high as the supply voltage, then the output will go. A VGS, there'll be a VGS drop. And for that reason, this particular stage doesn't have a very good swing. The swing is not really, in practical cases, is not really limited by a diagram like this, uh, which says that you have to keep M1 and M2 in saturation, but is determined more by a diagram like this. This diagram is telling you uh, the limitation on swing which comes in from the input side. So note that uh, what it says is the following, that this V in that you see here, this is one limit here. And, and so we, we have drawn one limit here. This, this line is V in DC plus V in max one. Okay, so there's a limit here, V in DC plus V in max one, which is this voltage here. And we are now, we are saying between this node and this node here, V0, we have a drop, which is equal to the threshold voltage of the transistor plus V sat one. The two, this together is nothing but VGS of this particular stage here. So what we are saying is that uh, the output voltage that you see here you know, uh, at the most, this one can touch this particular part here. Uh, uh, and, 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 and so the maximum swing that you can get is determined by a diagram like this rather than a, uh, a figure of, of this kind, okay, which is a swing determined from based on the input consideration here, okay. So basically then, uh, uh, so uh, the maximum value of V0 that you can get is, uh, 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 is determined by uh, 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 this V in DC plus V in max one minus whatever is this value here minus VT one minus V sat one. That's the maximum value of output voltage that you can get here. This value, as I said, can at the most go here. So this is a swing determined by the by looking at the limitations from the input side here, and it's for that reason that swing of this particular amplifier, common drain amplifier, is limited.
and 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 therefore any time that you're looking for a good output swing this day and it is being driven by a previous stage which is also biased by the same supply voltage then your common drain amplifier is not going to provide you with with a good output voltage swing so despite all the other advantages of low output voltage low output resistance high linearity uh this does not provide you with adequate swing and it's for that reason that often this common drain amplifier is not used at the output stage here okay so then basically then uh, all right so before i leave with this particular common drain let's very quickly look at the uh, frequency response frequency response we have seen of common emitter uh, common collector amplifier is very good similarly for the uh, common drain amplifier also frequency response is pretty uh much better than a common source amplifier here so this is the small signal equivalent circuit and uh, as usual we can determine by 1 by 2 pi sigma here often this will not give you the right result the reason being is uh this particular uh, uh method relies on a dominant pole being there and in a common drain amplifier just like a common collector amplifier what happens is there is a there are poles two poles and a zero and the zero often happens to be very close to the first pole and therefore there is a pole zero cancellation that we had seen earlier and because of that you get a very large bandwidth here so similarly many times this particular expression will not give you the right answer because it's ignoring the presence of the second pole and as well as the zero here all right so let's uh, in any case let's uh, quickly calculate uh, uh, using this expression the time constants here so we can take cgd here and cgd of course is uh, simply rg here uh, resistance we can take cgs this involves a little bit more uh, ca involved calculation that the net resistance seen by cgs is rs plus rg divided by 1 plus gmrs here and this one of course is a, uh, since is the output here so it basically sees the output resistance 1 by gm in parallel with rs here if you want to be more accurate you can put here 1 1 over gm plus gmb here in in this case uh, forgotten to add a gmb term here uh, so we have all these terms then sum them up and you get the 3db frequency here so let me illustrate uh, the other one the more accurate is of course this one which uh, a transfer function approach which tells you that there are two poles here and a zero here and uh, so let me give you an example so here is a common drain amplifier so again this will give you the accurate value uh, the other one is an approximation so if i take this common drain amplifier and uh, use my uh, open circuit time constant approach i get a value of uh, 2.1 uh, gigahertz from from all these time constants here now because we didn't did not use a rs here uh, if if you go back and look at the transfer function the h the second order one h has an rs into it so when you put rs equal to 0 the second order term goes to 0 here and what you end up is getting is one pole and only one zero all right for rs equal to 0 when rs is not equal to 0 then you'll get two poles here so for rs equal to 0 then we get first pole here and the zero is 3.97 into 10.9 here so note that the two are very close to each other the pole and the zero are very close to each other as a result of which you can see here that the actual 3 db frequency of this amplifier goes to 5.3 gigahertz here because of this uh, the pole and zeros are sort of cancelling each other's effect here so 5.3 gigahertz is what simulation predicts taking into account the actual transfer function while our simplified picture only tells us 2.1 gigahertz so in fact it sort of underestimates the actual bandwidth in this case is uh, a factor of 2 higher uh then then what is predicted here if you put an rs here if you put an rs atk now what happens is uh our open uh, circuit time constant approach predicts 1.23 10 to the power 9 uh, 1.23 gigahertz here uh, the transfer function says first pole is at 1.23 gigahertz zero is at 3.97 here and uh, in this case our uh the uh, prediction is not very far off the prediction of 1.23 and 1.49 are are re reasonably close here okay and uh, so when you have a large rs you start getting one dominant pole and uh, then uh, you know our estimate using this particular method is uh, not that much off here. 
So in any case with common train amplifiers, you should always be on guard that your dominant pole approximation may not hold. Okay, and, and the value that you get, you must check, check it against simulations or more accurate calculation here. But uh, the other point is, if you note the 3 dB frequencies that I'm giving you here, the 3 dB frequency is much higher. Uh, is 1.49 gigahertz. So we see that this particular amplifier is a wide bandwidth amplifier. Okay. Uh, uh, in comparison, note that you have 80k source resistance and these are biased at similar values here. If you look at this amplifier, common source amplifier gives you 0.19 gigahertz here and you can see a common drain is giving you 1.49 gigahertz. So just as a comparison, you can note that this is a much uh, uh, common source amplifier, of course, has a much lower bandwidth. And uh, okay, so this is a sort of summary between the two, uh, comparison between the two, a common source and a common drain. Uh, common source output resistance, you know, output resistance is at this node, and output resistance is nothing but R0 of this one in parallel with R0 of this one, and output resistance is large. But note that output resistance is nothing but R0 is nothing but 1 by lambda divided by IDS. So if you want low output resistance, you'll have to bias it at very high currents. Okay, that's what we mean by this. The rail-to-rail -rail output swing, this voltage here can approach 3.3 positive supply rail or a negative supply rail within a saturation voltage drop. Okay, so when we say rail-to-rail -rail output voltage swing, we mean that it can approach this minus the saturation voltage drop and saturation voltage drop you can make it small by increasing the size. So uh, this is a positive feature of this particular amplifier. Uh, frequency response is not very good. It suffers from Miller's effect and uh, 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 so it's inferior we just saw. So the major, if, I, if I'm thinking of a common source amplifier as an output stage, as an output stage, the major advantage of common source amplifier is that it gives you good swing here, rail to rail swing here. If I look at common drain amplifier, we saw that it has a positive feature of low output resistance and we saw that it has a good frequency response, but swing will be lower because of the drop here. This is a, a common drain amplifier which is shown using a PMOS transistor. So swing is lower by a drop here. Between this node and this node, there is a, uh, a VGS drop here, gate to source voltage drop, and gate to source voltage drop is at least as large as a threshold voltage. Okay, so there's a drop between these two nodes because of VT, so it has a poor swing. So now if we compare common drain and common source, this has all the nice features for an output stage, but doesn't have a swing. This has a swing, but doesn't have low output resistance and frequency response is also uh, not that uh, uh, high here. Uh, we'll see uh, a little later on that efficiency is in both of these cases here. These are class A amplifiers. Efficiency in both of these cases is less than 25% here. But this is something interesting here. So note that the disadvantage of this particular stage is output resistance. But no, note that I'm not going to use this particular stage most of the time as a standalone stage. Here. What I would have is a situation like this. That I'm using a common source amplifier that you see here as an output stage, but this common source amplifier as an output stage would be followed by other stages before it. For example, this could be a gain stage, building up the gain, and we'll soon see from next lecture onwards that often a differential pair is used at the input side. here. So normally when you build amplifiers, say an op-amp, it's going to be a multi-stage amplifier with common source being an output stage, this as a gain stage and this is a differential amplifier. So when I'm using it as a multi-stage amplifier and the whole thing is going to have a very high gain, then what I can do is I can put a negative feedback, right? So for example, the overall amplifier may have a gain of 10 to the power 5. And I'm interested in making an amplifier with a gain of 100, let's say. So what I will do is this whole amplifier has a gain of 10 to the power 5. I'll put negative feedback and using negative feedback, reduce the gain to 100. And when you reduce the gain to 100, the, uh, you know, the closed loop gain is 100, which means that from open loop gain to closed loop gain, there has been a factor of 100, uh, a factor of 1000 change. Open loop gain is 1000, uh, uh, sorry, 10 to the power 5, and closed loop gain is 100. So you reduce the gain by a factor of 1000. And what happens is, as I've indicated earlier, you get benefits due to that. 
And one of the benefits that you get here is that the output resistance is reduced. For example, uh, if we do a simulation of this one, uh, let me show you an example here. So this is a common source amplifier. Note that output resistance is 938. Uh, uh, gain is 11, but we are not really interested in uh, gain at this output stage here. But then output resistance is 938. But then when I embed it in a multi-stage amplifier, so which means that this gives us 100, this overall is 10 to the power 4, 10 to the power 4 multiplied by the gain here, which is 11. So overall gain is 10 to the power 5. But then note that we have built a feedback and the feedback loop is telling us that the gain is going to be 100. Think of this as an op amp now. Think of it as an op amp and this is a non-inverting amplifier. Non-inverting amplifier and all of you know gain of non-inverting amplifier is 1 plus RF by uh, R in here. So 1 plus 99 by 1K, so gain is 100. So if I now measure the output resistance with the negative feedback, note that the gain is 99.94, output resistance is 0.8 ohms. Output resistance is 0.8 ohms here. All right. So the point that I'm trying to emphasize is the following. The common source amplifier, when you use it as an output stage, it has the positive feature of very good swing. The swing can reach the positive and the negative supply rail. The bad feature is that it has high output resistance here. But we need not worry too much about this high output resistance if we are going to use it in a feedback loop. Because as you can see here, if I place it in a feedback loop and I put a typical uh, negative feedback here, the output resistance is, has been reduced to 0.8 ohms, has been reduced to very small values. Okay, so that feature uh, of high output resistance is overcome by putting it in a negative feedback loop. And uh, it, it will continue to have uh, the large swing that, that it has here. Now, I can't do that with a common drain amplifier. If I had taken a common drain amplifier, common drain amplifier will have a low output uh, resistance to begin with. I can put it in a feedback loop. Well, the output resistance will become even lower, but uh, th that doesn't really matter. But the swing will again be, uh, swing I cannot alter by negative feedback. The swing will remain the same because note, the swing is limited by the fact that between here and here, there is going to be a drop. And that you cannot alter by negative feedback. So swing of common drain amplifier will remain poor, whether you embed it in a feedback or you don't embed it in a feedback, you can't overcome that disadvantage. On the other hand, the disadvantage of low, uh, high output traces you can overcome by putting it in a negative feedback. Okay. So for that reason, uh, if you're going to build a multi-stage MOS amplifiers, you're, uh, predominantly, and if you're interested in good swing, you'll use common source amplifier as an output stage. Okay. So it makes more sense than a common drain here. But the drawback of this particular stage, one drawback is still there. So we have solved two problems. One is it has a good swing, and by putting it in a negative feedback loop, it has low output resistance also. But one negative feature of this stage is that efficiency for class A stage is, is low. And the, that uh, you overcome by basically going to a class EB stage. Okay. So that's what I'm going to quickly describe here. So we have seen the, uh, uh, the disadvantage of, uh, all class A amplifiers here. Uh, we have done this analysis earlier, whether it's a class A can be a class, uh, common source or a common drain and a simple analysis, which you can see later on, we can show that efficiency is always less than 25% here. The best you could do. Uh, is, is, is 25 percent here. And, and the reason for this is we have seen earlier one of the major drawbacks of this amplifier is that even when you don't apply any signal, the transistor is biased and it keeps on drawing power from the supply voltage here. And if you want to make an efficient amplifier, we have said that you must make an amplifier which does not have any standby power. It takes the power from the supply only when power has to be delivered to the load. It must have that particular feature and that one all right, so uh, uh, a, a amplifier which has that kind of a feature is, uh, uh, for example, this one here. If you look at this simple, uh, all right, this is uh, this is being built using a. Uh, all right, so uh, if you okay, so in this case, this is a common source amplifier. This is a common drain amplifier here, and so what one is trying to say is that. Uh, if you note that if this is a common drain amplifier, this is the driver transistor, this is the load, 
And if you don't want any bias current to flow, there's no need for M2. So you can only use M1 uh, here. And when you drive it, all that you will get is a negative uh, part of the swing here. So when, when, the, when the sinusoid goes negative, the transistor turns on and the current starts flowing. And, and, and you get a negative part here. And uh, since we have seen all this earlier, so I'm, I'm going over it quickly. Uh, a stage like this will have high efficiency. We've also seen uh, this particular stage will only give you the negative part here. This particular stage gives you the positive part here. And if you combine them together, you get uh, both the cycles together here. So you end up getting a class B, uh, class B uh, uh, amplifier here. We call it a push-pull amplifier because it, this pushes the current in and this uh, this pushes the current into RL and this pulls the current uh, from RL here. Uh, so this one is a class AB stage which is being built using uh, using a common drain stage here. Note that the output is taken at the source here. You could do the same thing. Uh, so uh, this is one here. Let me skip here. All right. So all this is there. Okay. Uh, I, I think I have most of the discussion here. Uh, using a common drain stage. Uh, this one, we know that uh, there is a crossover distortion here uh, when you, and this can be avoided by putting a suitable bias voltage here. All right. So when you apply a bias voltage here, one volt here, minus one volt here, one volt is a threshold voltage. So you, you just bias it at the edge of a conduction and then you avoid the crossover distortion and you get a uh, nice sinusoid here. And then this becomes a class AB. This one was class B because it was conducting for less than uh, half a cycle. And this one conducts for more than half a cycle, a uh, little bit more than half a cycle here. So it's a class AB stage. Yeah, this is the one that I was talking about, a class AB push-pull stage, push-pull amplifier using a common source stage. So this one is being built through common drain. And this one, exactly the same idea. This one is being built using a common source stage. And so this one, this amplifier then will have uh, a good swing and uh, uh, if I embed it in a feedback loop, we'll have low output resistance. Further, because it's a class AB stage, we'll have good efficiency as well. Okay, so this is the preferred. Uh, so you can see how it operates if I go in the positives. So these voltages are keeping M2 and M1 just at the threshold of conduction, all right? Uh, which means that if this is 3.3 and threshold voltage is one, I would make this as 2.3. Okay, 2.3, which means that the net gate to source voltage is around one volt. So it's just bias at the threshold. Similarly, I will make this as, if this is minus 3.3, I'll make this as minus 2.3. And so this is just bias at the edge of threshold. When this input comes in, then what happens is uh, the gate, this transistor uh, turns off, this transistor turns on, and uh, it, it pulls the current from here. And when the negative comes in, this transistor turns off, this one turns on and it drives the current in. So it's a normal push-pull amplifier, except that we have used a common source stage. All right, so the rest of it is more of simulation showing uh, that the amplifier uh, works properly. Let me see if I have anything. Uh, so I, I have a couple of things here, but let me stop here. Uh, but I'm sure you're, uh, you're reeling under the impact of uh, coverage being done very fast, but uh, remember that there, then there's nothing new here. It's exactly the same, exactly the same class AB stage that we had done earlier, except it's with a mass amplifier. 